All right, we talked about another <coughs> type of uh, processing device that would give us some time variant. <coughs> Uh, one of the things we're going to be doing in understanding conceptually synthesis is to do what is, what is called a block diagram. So if I take a block diagram, we would, we would have a, uh, a signal generator, which is an oscillator. Usually on your diagram, you just list it as a circle. That's an oval for me, but it should be a circle. So an oscillator, let's say I have a sine wave oscillator, and on our block diagrams, we will go horizontal, and in a block diagram, we're delineating the structure of synthesis by anything horizontal moving from left to right is where the primary audio signal will be. This, is the, this pathway of sound that we're actually hearing is referred to as the carrier signal. So the carrier is what I'll refer to as the sound that is coming from this oscillator. In this case, I've set it up to be a sine wave, and I can assign it to a frequency. It might be 1,000 hertz or whatever I want. <coughs> and along the path, and remember an oscillator, because it's oscillating back and forth, we have to have alternating current electricity. So the original analog synthesizers, that had to be an AC current uh, on the carrier. So then as we take that path, I could run it into a filter, and usually your processors are uh, uh, defined in a block diagram as either a square or a rectangle, some kind of block figure would be meaning that the signal is being processed. So this would be, if I have this and I do LPF, then you would know that that's a going through a low-pass filter, and it's a sine wave, and then you always have a uh, frequency of cutoff. So if my cutoff frequency on this one were set, say, at 500 hertz, for example, then we go through, and then usually after you leave a signal modifier, <coughs> we can modify this with, with several different modifications, but if I just have one filter, then we go into this triangle is an amplifier. So this is another type of modifier. So usually your oscillators are referred to as voltage control oscillators, or VCO. So if you look at a lot of commercial synthesizers, you'll see VCOs, voltage control oscillator. And the reason being is that we're going to, just a second, we're going to control that oscillator with another function and, or modulate it. <coughs> and so the, the fact that it can be controlled by some other module means we call it a voltage control oscillator. Same thing on the L LPF. This is actually referred to as a voltage control filter is the category for this, meaning that we will be able to control it with something else in just a second. And then finally, we have a, a VCA, which is a voltage control amplifier because we will be sending something into this as well. So your amplifier is usually a triangle. After you have your amplifier, we generally go to a speaker. That's my crude speaker. So, and then we hear sound, or we, or we have energy of, of molecules moving back and forth, and then the brain makes sound later. So, <clears throat> in, our, in our simple block diagram, we start with some kind of vibrating source, remember, our oscillator. In this case, we define it as a sine wave, which has no partials. The fundamental for this is 1,000 hertz. This is the carrier moving across this, this way from left to right on a horizontal uh, plane. That sound goes into a low-pass filter. The cutoff frequency is set at 500 hertz, which then gets amplified into a speaker. But look at what we've got here and see if you can imagine what the sound is going to be coming at the speaker. If we have a 1,000 hertz sine wave coming in, going into a low-pass filter, uh, it attenuates above this cutoff frequency. So the low-pass allows for you to pass frequencies below the cutoff frequency and attenuate things above it. So if everything above 500 hertz is attenuated and everything below it is passed, then what is it that we hear coming through the filter into the amplifier? If you think about it, everything above 500 is not allowed to pass through this filter. Then what we hear in our speaker is silence because we've put our cutoff frequency below the fundamental of the uh, sine wave oscillator, so we would hear nothing. If we change our cutoff frequency on our low-pass filter to 1500, then we allow everything below 1500 to pass through and everything above to be attenuated, in which case the 1000 hertz signal does go through. If I were to change my oscillator from a sine wave to a sawtooth waveform, remember the saw sawtooth waveform had all partials and an amplitude relationship of 1 over n, then we would have, if, if 1000 is the fundamental, remember we would have 1000, then a 2 to 1 ratio the second partial would be 2,000, we get 3,000, 4,000, so forth and so forth. 
So all the overtones that would be coming in the sawtooth would be 1,000 and above. So if we have this at 1,500, we're going to be attenuating everything about 1,500. We would still hear just a sine wave coming through because with 1,500, we would be attenuating all of these overtones that are in the sawtooth waveform. So we could make the sound of a sine wave by having a sawtooth waveform or any kind of waveform, running it through a low-pass filter, and then attenuating uh, its overtones through, through that, uh, the cutoff frequency and then through the amplification. So this is how, you, when you set up a synthesis patch or an analog synthesizer, which we'll be duplicating in, in digital synthesizers, you're setting up some kind of oscillator waveform, and then you're going to be modifying that through some, some type, and then through amplification, uh, changing some of the parameters of that. So this is the uh, be beginning of what we'll be doing with different kind of modulations. And when we come back, we'll be taking a look at how we can then start to have control functions to these uh, carrier signals going through. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.